good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Very warm welcome to you uh, for our service for this week of prayer for Christian unity. And um, very, very warm welcome to our friends from Breeston Methodist Church. It's lovely to have you uh, with us this morning. And, um, and of course, our eyes are not on each other. Our eyes are on Jesus this morning. So I'm going to say, just going to say a short prayer and then we're going to worship him. So let, let's, just take, let's just take a moment to be still in the presence of God. It's a moment of quiet. Lord Jesus, we thank you for your great love for us. We thank you that you want to meet with each of us this morning. So please help us to fix our hearts and our minds upon you. Help us to worship you in spirit and in truth. And we pray, Lord, for this service, Lord, that you would move through it, Holy Spirit. And as the children meet, please, please meet with them, Lord. So just come, Holy Spirit, we pray, and let Jesus be glorified. Amen. Amen. So we're going to sing a, a few songs just to help us fix our eyes on Jesus. And um, you, you just feel relaxed. If you want to stand, stand. If you want to sit, sit. But it's better to stand because, one thing, you won't see the screen if you're sitting. So, uh, and you can sing better when you're standing. So let's stand to worship the Lord. Remains for those who gladly choose. 
Thank you, Officer <laughs> Zong. Just, just, uh, just be seated then, please. I blame uh, Jonathan on the on the keyboard <laughs> because uh, Jonathan said before the service, "Shall we just have two songs at the beginning?" And I said, "No, we'll have three, Jonathan." So it all sounds a bit dodgy to me. Don't you agree? Don't you agree? Oh. <laughs> just you wait. <laughs> So that, that song was about uh, strength will rise as you wait upon the Lord, as you wait upon the Lord. And, um, you know, I'm sure today we, we've all come with, may, may, well, maybe you've come with things that are weighing you down. May, maybe there are, are real challenges on your heart and mind. And it may not be about you, maybe about somebody you know. It may just be about the church. Lord, we just, just you know, whatever it is really. So let's just, I just want to take a moment to give any burdens that we're carrying to Jesus. And um, just, just take a moment now, just to consider anything that you're carrying. It might be yourself, your circumstances, another person. It might be a burden for the church, a burden for the village. Whatever it is, let's just, just take a moment now. Jesus says, take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. Cast your burdens upon me. Amen. So Sean, who's going to give a brief introduction, is going to uh, do the reading now, and then Joe is going to speak. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. It's lovely to be sharing in worship with you this morning, and on behalf of the folks from Breeston Methodist Church, uh, thank you for your warm welcome and the drinks beforehand. That's been wonderful. Uh, my name is Sean, Deacon Sean Street, and I'm a Methodist minister, and uh, from the autumn, I've been doing some work alongside uh, Reverend Arnold Dixon um, at um, Breeston Methodist Church, slowly but surely, let's say, to begin with, and uh, yeah, working out um, yeah, how we might work together and work in our community and uh, further God's mission and ministry in this place. So I'm going to share with you a reading that comes from the Gospel of John, chapter 15, part of Jesus' uh, words to his disciples, and it's entitled in the New Revised Standard Version, Jesus the True Vine. I am the true vine, and my father is the vine grower. He removes every branch in me that bears no fruit. Every branch that bears fruit, he prunes to make it bear more fruit. You have already been cleansed by the word that I have spoken to you. Abide in me as I abide in you. I am, just as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine you are the branches. Those who abide in me and I in them bear much fruit, because apart from me you can do nothing. Whoever does not abide in me is thrown away like a branch and withers. Such branches are gathered, thrown into the fire and burned. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask for whatever you wish and it will be done for you. My Father is glorified by this, that you bear much fruit and become my disciples. 
As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. I have said these things to you so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. No one has greater love than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. I do not call you servants any longer because the servant does not know what the master is doing. But I have called you friends because I have made known to you everything that I have heard from my father. You did not choose me, but I chose you. And I appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last, so that the Father will give you whatever you ask him in my name. I am giving you these commands so that you may love one another. May God bless these words to us today. Amen. I'm moving that because I can't really see over it. Let's pray. Loving God, thank you for the way that you take words and scripture and you speak right into our hearts. And I pray that all that we're singing and hearing and listening to this morning would touch us and draw us closer to you. Speak to us afresh, Lord. Amen. Hi, so I'm Jo, um, and I'm part of the leadership team here. Um, in my day job, I work in a, a school. I work with uh, uh, young people aged from 3 to 18 um, as a school chaplain, so that's what I do uh, some of the rest of the time. Um, but it's really, uh, it feels like a real privilege to be uh, speaking this morning, so thank you um, for uh, being here and for being part of um, church globally and church locally. The theme um, that I was given for this morning is serving, and um, the passage that we've heard is probably really familiar to many of us, possibly not the one that springs to mind immediately when you think of serving, but hopefully um, it'll make a little bit of sense um, as we go on. I don't know what you think about when you hear the word serving or servant or serve. Um, I have to say, when I think about those things, um, the immediate image that springs to my mind is Downton Abbey. I don't know if anybody else is into Downton Abbey. Um, do like a bit of Downton Abbey. It's one of those kind of relaxed, chill. Um, but that's the kind of image that comes into my head when I think about serving. I think about servants, and I think about people who are um, doing the menial tasks and the menial jobs um, that are waiting on other people. Um, I'm reminded of uh, Cork Abbey and hearing at Cork Abbey about the tunnels there, um, which are there so that the people in the big house didn't have to look at the servants as they left, because that's obviously, you know, uh, Mars, the landscape. Um, and and I suppose quite a lot of the images in my mind are a little bit negative. And even though I've been around church quite a long time now and churches, different kinds of churches, and I'd, I've heard loads of talks on serving, I guess many of you have as well, um, there's still, um, from a kind of contemporary point of view, quite a negative um, connotation to the word, I think. And particularly in this uh, day and age where I think the focus tends to be on um, how can I fulfill my potential? Um, how can I become all that I can be? And it's kind of very uh, much about self-fulfillment and um, doing what, you, um, what you're called to do, even in, the, in church context. We, we often focus on that um, rather than on um, what does it mean to serve. And I was really challenged when I was reading um, this particular passage um, by the way in which Jesus puts himself up as a role model. And in some ways, you know, it's a little bit like the squirrel one, isn't it? I'm guessing many of you will have heard the, um, the sort of story, the Sunday school story where um, somebody says to the, the child, you know, what's grey and has a fluffy tail? And he says, uh, the child says, um, well, I, 
I, I think um, I think it's a squirrel, but I know the answer's got to be Jesus, so I don't quite understand. Um, so in, in theory, we know that Jesus is the model for everything that we do. Um, but I, I just found myself looking afresh at this story and seeing um, just some glimpses of how Jesus actually puts himself up there as a model and gives us an example to follow in this whole area. So I hope um, that you'll kind of come with me as I I share a few thoughts um, on Jesus holding himself up as um, somebody that we can emulate and imitate as we seek to understand more, more about serving. And whether we um, feel that we're already doing quite enough serving, thank you very much, or whether we feel we're at a bit of a crossroads in all of that, or whether we're asking questions of God about what we should be doing, um, hopefully uh, Jesus' example speaks to us um, wherever we are. So the first thing that Jesus says is um, sort of connected with this, is this thing about abide in, in me. He says, abide in me. Abide in my love, just as I abide in the Father's love. Um, Some passages translate it, remain in me, um, make your home in me, just as I remain in my Father's love, or uh, make my home in my Father. That sense of abiding, staying, resting, being connected. And that whole thing about connectedness is absolutely fundamental to who Jesus is as a servant. Jesus finds his identity, his strength, his energy, and his sense of purpose and calling in and through his relationship with the Father, through the Holy Spirit. And I just love um, the the beginning of the uh, passage where uh, Jesus washes the disciples' feet, um, which is actually part of this narrative, even though, you know, if if you take the chapters, um, it kind of feels like it's ages ago. Um, But actually, it's all part of the same narrative. Jesus washes his disciples' feet, and then he has quite a long um, sort of conversation and talk with the disciples. And this is part of that. It's a couple of chapters away, but it's connected in. And uh, it says um, that Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands, and knowing that he was going to the Father, then went on to wash his disciples' feet. So he's able to put himself in the place of a servant, taking the the worst possible job um, in the household because of that sense of security in God. He knows who he is in God. And he knows where he's going. He knows um, who his father is and where he belongs. And there's an invitation for us here too to abide in that same loving relationship, to, to stay connected, to be connected to God the Father in the way that Jesus is connected. And I find that incredible. We are encouraged and called by Jesus himself to experience that same relationship and to stay and remain in that. And our serving flows out of that love that we receive from God. Nothing that we do for God can make God love us any more than he already does. I'm going to say that again because I need to hear it, I think, sometimes as well. There's nothing that we do for God that makes God love us any more than he does already. God loves us completely and we rest and remain and are rooted in that love. The second thing which kind of connects in with that is the whole idea of walking in obedience to God. And that's really connected because it's kind of in the same uh, bit of the scripture. So it says, if you keep my commands, Jesus says, if you keep my, my commands, you will remain in my love, just as I have kept my father's commands and remain in his love. So again, Jesus is drawing a direct, if you do this, you will be like this, just as I am like this, and that's happening for me. So we're, we're called to emulate again that sense of obedience to what God says. Jesus lived a life that was um, 
ruled and um, orientated around the guidance and the leading of the Holy Spirit. He did uh, what God called him to do in in all those different times and seasons of his life. He was open, he responded, and he was obedient. And that same call, that same invitation is there for us too. And it's not a case of, um, if you obey me, I will love you. Again, we're not earning that love. But that that obedience comes out and is is connected with the love that flows from God to us. Jesus' life of obedience culminates in his sacrifice on the cross. Many of us will not be called to that kind of obedience, that kind of sacrifice. But some of the things that we find God leading us into may be challenging. They may be difficult. And it can be very costly to live a life that is a, is a life of obedience. Some of us may know people already, may be aware of those that we're uh, close to who are suffering or struggling because of their faith. Serving can be really challenging and really costly. But we're called to walk in obedience as Jesus did. That obedience, as I said, is is rooted in God's love. And the third way we are called, invited to emulate the, the serving of Jesus is by loving others as Jesus loves us. And again, there's that parallel. Um, love one another as I have loved you. D- Jesus isn't asking us to do anything that he is not already doing. No one, we're told, has greater love than to lay down their lives for their friends. And Jesus, as I said on the cross, shows that love. Now, love, it kind of sounds, we, use, we bandy the word around a lot, don't we? Particularly, I think, in, in church circles, we talk about God's love. We talk about loving others. Um, again, I think sometimes trickier than, um, than it sounds Because I'm guessing for many of us, certainly for me, I'm hoping I'm not the only person here, there are people that I sometimes find it a little bit tricky to love. I'm seeing quite a few people nodding here. Uh, I'm so glad I'm not the only one. But there are some people who just have that way of winding us up wrong. Sometimes we find ourselves in situations where actually we do get quite irritated or we see somebody behaving in a way that feels really um, wrong or um, disrespectful, it's really hard to love people who behave like that. Sometimes people may treat us wrongly. Really hard to love them. But there's this challenge that comes, love one another as I have loved you. Not just the people we get on really well with, not just our friends, not just the people who think the same way as we do or who have the same kind of theological perspectives. I'm guessing if we started having a a sort of an in-depth, if I sort of threw a, 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 a a sort of tricky theological question out and sort of said, oh, I'm not even going to think of one because you'll start thinking about it. Um, But let's just say I threw a kind of a bit of a hot potato in the mix. I'm guessing we could pretty quickly find ways of falling out, couldn't we? You know, I I think, you know, Christians down the years have shown how easy it is to disagree, to um, to fall out. And just as in, in wider society, people all the time are finding those areas of you know, dispute and um, conflict. But we've chosen to be here together this morning because we know that it is God's heart that we should be in relationship with one another. And we want to learn to grow and to respect and to value and to celebrate our differences as well as those things, those many things that we have in common. And one of the exciting things about being together as different churches is that we know we don't agree about everything, but actually God's love is more important than that. Even within our own churches, we could find things to fall out about. Maybe we do. But actually God's love is more important than that. And that command to love one another is true for us whether whether we... uh, find people easy to get on with or whether people wind us up the wrong way. It's true whether people have been lovely to us or whether they've hurt us. We're called to love one another. 
And our serving comes out of that love that God has. And it's not a kind of a mushy, wishy-washy love. Jesus' love wasn't that kind of hearts and flowers type love. It was a gritty, sacrificial, costly, tough love that overcame people letting him down and messing up and betraying him. It was stronger than that. It was God-given and it is there for each one of us. So I wonder for us, in our serving, where is God calling us to love others, to love one another, and to serve out of that love at the moment? The fourth thing that I noticed in the passage where Jesus draws that kind of um, do this because I've done that, is in this whole area of, of connectedness again, but in listening and learning and understanding what God is doing. And Jesus says, I, it seems a bit ironic, doesn't it, to be talking about serving when Jesus actually says, I do not call you servants. <sighs> no, that's not very convenient. But he says he calls us friends. I do not call you servants. It's not that we're not called to serve. I do not call you servants, I call you friends, because I have made known to you everything I learned from the Father. So Jesus says, just as I have listened to, been in relationship with, learned and grown through what the Father has shown me, so you too are invited to participate in that relationship, to have God's purposes revealed to you, to learn, to listen, to respond, to be in that relationship of sharing uh, God's heart and God's compassion. Jesus did, we're told um, in several points in the book of John, Jesus did what he saw his father doing. Um, he says it on several occasions. I do what I see my father doing. As God revealed things to Jesus, Jesus responded and did them. We are all different people. Jesus had a unique com contribution to make in the world. We know that. Jesus had incredible gifts. He had um, abilities. He had supernatural gifts from God by the Spirit. He was um, somebody who uh, had a, a connectedness and a relationship with God, and he had God's compassion um, for the world. He wept over Jerusalem. He healed the sick. He uh, set uh, people free who were restricted by all kinds of uh, limitations and problems, spiritual and physical. Jesus had this incredible ministry of service to the world, to the communities that he engaged with. But what we hear, too, is that God has called each one of us. You as an individual, not like anybody else in the room, however old or young you are, you have a contribution to make that only you can do. You have skills, you have abilities... You have the ability to pray, to encourage, to support, to speak words of kindness and compassion and uh, life um, into those around you, to fulfill the potential that you have in the gifts and skills that you've been given. Many of you, all of you, will be doing that already in the places that you find yourselves day to day in workplaces, in your families, in uh, the communities that you live in. Many of the things that you do in the community or in the church might be unseen to others. But they come out of your individual abilities and gifts and your willingness to serve. Serving is the place where our gifts and talents and passions connect with God's love for the world and with the needs of the people around us. There's that sense of connection that happens. And as God speaks to us and shows us his purposes for our lives, we're able to be part of that mission and ministry of God in the world, which is an incredible privilege. But that sense of listening and being aware of what God is saying is absolutely key to that. 
So I wonder for many of us, or maybe even for a few of us, whether it's a time to refocus and think about how we serve. To think about how God has called us to use the gifts and talents we have. Also to think about the needs that we see around us. Jesus didn't meet every single need he saw. He was responsive to what God said to him as he moved around. But he was able to listen and to exercise his unique ministry, to be fully the person that he was called to be. So whether we have been serving for years and years, whether we serve in our day-to-day jobs and are consumed by that and don't have capacity elsewhere, whether we serve primarily in our churches or in our families or with our friends, wherever God is calling us to serve, perhaps it's a time to reflect on how the model of Jesus encourages us, spurs us on, affirms what we're already doing, but invites us to new areas of serving, perhaps. Let's just take a moment in quiet, and um, I'm going to just say a short prayer. The Apostle Paul, at the beginning of the book of Romans, said, So here's what I want you to do, God helping you. Take your everyday, ordinary life, your sleeping, eating, going to work, and walking around life, and place it before God as an offering. Embracing what God does for you is the best thing you can do for him. Father, will you help us to be inspired, affirmed, encouraged and challenged by the model of Jesus that we see in Scripture? Help us to abide in your love as we serve others. Help us to walk in obedience as you speak to us day by day. Help us to love others as you have loved us. And help us to stay connected with you, listening to you and learning from you as we follow in your footsteps. Amen. So uh, appropriately, we're going to stand in when you sing uh, Servant King. And um, I think the important thing about service is to be like Jesus. For him, every day it would appear, he, he, he spent time with his father. Today, Father. What is it today, Father? Give me strength today, Father. It's, it's, it's an ongoing, isn't it? Today, Lord. What, which person today? Help me to be like you today, Lord. And that's what this song is, really. It's about focusing on Jesus and... Um, the servant king. Help us, Lord, to be like you. So let's stand to sing this song.
Peter, that Peter's going to lead us in our intercessions. What lovely words they were, especially following Joe's talk. Just felt so alive, those words. Amen. So let's pray. In our prayers, I'm going to try and pick up on those four main points that, uh, that Joe opened up for us to abide in him, to walk in obedience, to love others, and to look, listen, and learn. Gracious and loving God, would you please expand our vision that it might be wide enough to recognize the colorful complexity of the tapestry you have chosen to weave around each and every one of us at the same time would you gather our frayed edges and our loose ends and somehow would you bind us together to reflect your glory. And that as you teach us to go inwards, would you please also encourage us to be able to go outwards, grounded in your love, yet with the wisdom and courage to walk that path of love and justice.
And as we walk in obedience, would you, the Lord of all power and all glory, who chose to become the servant of all, would you show us afresh the power and the glory of servanthood, enabling us to minister to those we come into contact with according to their needs and the giftings you've given us. God of justice, please would you empower us to be agents of your grace and mercy. Would you bless us with the courage to relinquish our power and influence and our desire for control? Would you bless us with the humility to stand with the oppressed and with the integrity to love our neighbours. And as we look at your example and listen to your words, Lord of justice and of grace, would you please remove the scales from my eyes so I can truly see the oppression around me. Would you give me the courage not only to name it but to fight it whilst being authentically present and bringing compassion to the oppressed. And so we think of those areas where we are already active in serving as churches in Breeston. And Lord, in this new year, we invite you to shape our lives and set the direction of our efforts within our community this year. We've listened to your word. We long to imitate your works. And so we invite your Holy Spirit to move in our church's activities throughout this year. Please would you breathe new life into the works of sunbeams. Tea and tea cake. Renew cafe. Messy Church, Living Hope, Table Talk, Alpha, Erewash Community Sponsorship, Lunch Club, Youth Cafe, The Food Bank and Toy Collection,
Men's Danger Club. And Lord, where we don't sense your life or your presence, please would you help us to seek you for where you are moving <coughs> us on to, where you're wanting us to serve next. But in those areas where we acknowledge your presence and your Holy Spirit moving, Would you please gift and equip? And would you bring your glory and your kingdom in our community? Amen. Uh, notices, uh, keep it as brief as we can. If you've got a notice, please come out and uh, keep it short. Uh, there will be refreshments served after the service at the back of the church, so please, uh, please stay for those. Um, we're starting Alpha tomorrow, and uh, if you'd like to come, please come or bring a friend. And you know, so it's a course that we can Monday night, seven thirty in here. Uh, it might be just be right for you. You know, so we're starting tomorrow with who is Jesus. Then next week, why did Jesus die? How can I be sure of my faith? It might just be the questions you're asking to help you understand and grow and you might have someone who's asking questions just bring them come with them tomorrow and um, if you can make a cake for alpha please be in touch with me please please uh, please be in touch if you want to go to a burns night supper there's one next saturday in Draycott. there's a list at the back please put your name down for a proper burns night and um, at 7, 7 p.m. next Saturday in Draycott. The sheet on the, on the table at the back. Anything else I should be saying? Or... No, that's fine. John, John is coming. Thank you, Peter, for praying for the Men's Danger Club and all the other ones as well. Much that we do. I mean, all the clubs, there's a lot. Now, Men's Danger Club is going bowling. The notice is up here. So if you want to come along, if you've never been before, then please come because uh, that's what the Men Dangerous Club does. It introduces people to events that they wouldn't normally join. Details are in here, so you can either see me after the service or contact me at home. Thank you very much. So Joe spoke about love, and so again, sing Love Divine. <coughs> Sorry. Oh. Do we have any birthdays? Yeah. yeah. I couldn't. I couldn't see Mark. Where? Oh, Mark is there. I, I, I was told about your. I knew. I knew about your birthday, Mark. You told me anyway, but I couldn't see you. So Mark's birthday's today, isn't it, Mark? Okay. So um, yes. Yeah, so if you want to give Mark a hug, he was standing by the door. Is that okay, Mark? That's fine. But not bounces. You don't want bumps, do you? No bumps, no bumps. But happy, happy to receive hugs. And uh, so we're going we're gonna to sing to you now, Mark. Is that okay? So So we're going to sing Love Divine or Love's Excelling. And that word, fix in us thy humble dwelling. Fix in us your love, Lord. So let's stand to sing that.
closing prayer. So Christ, the Son of God, perfect in you the image of his glory and gladden your hearts with the good news of his kingdom. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. So go in peace to love and serve the Lord in the name of Christ. Amen. Amen. So enjoy cake, enjoy coffee. Or biscuits. Oh, Thank you.